I'm John Dickerson. We are joined by two men who share a passion for space and the power of exploration. Former House Speaker Newt Gingrich and Apollo 11 astronaut Buzz Aldrin, who wrote about the next step for the U.S. space program in Mission to Mars and his newly released children's book, Welcome to Mars. Buzz, I want to start with you. In 1969, you were on Face the Nation. You had just walked on the moon. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, there was talk in that show from Houston about the next goal, yes. and Mars was discussed. Yes. You're still pushing for a mission to Mars. What would you say is the biggest obstacle to getting a mission to Mars? Two things. Uh, growing public apathy and realization of the budget that really makes sense for that endeavor and to make America a world leader and great. When you were speaking yesterday at the book uh, signing, what, what question did people ask you? Did they have a... Or did they... Well, they're getting a bit more mature, but it used to be, uh, what does it feel like? Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> and, and the answer among uh, astronauts bec- became, fighter pilots have ice in their veins. They don't feel. <laughs> they execute. Right. <laughs> Newt, when you were running for president, you mentioned having a permanent, uh, I think you said by the end of my second term, we will have the first permanent base on the moon. And then you talked about the technology to get a, a man to Mars. What was the reception then of that idea? Well, I was talking in Florida in the Space Coast, and the reception was great from people and uh, utterly stupid from my <laughs> opponents. Uh, yeah. You know, the, the fact is that the political elite of this country has been trapped into a bureaucratic expenditure. We spent $9 billion on Constellation, which was a project designed to get us to Mars, and then canceled it. Now, I suspect if you had given Buzz and a few friends of his $9 billion, they'd be, talk, they'd be doing this from Mars. <laughs> uh, I mean, there are ways to get this stuff done, but you don't get it done in a, in a slow, overly planned and frankly, very pork-barreled. I mean, the Congress is guilty, too. The people in Congress who are protecting bad equipment being built in their district in a way that's very unhelpful. You agree, Buzz? <laughs> well, I, I would say it, uh, that consolation wasn't uh, canceled. It was not the best idea in the first place. And uh, it was canceled because the spacecraft grew in weight, and the rocket, reliability, wonderful. <coughs> it flown on the shuttle. It was inadequate. And the replacement that the company that built the solid rocket had never flown, and they won the contract on reliability on previous. Um, and it was bigger, and it vibrated, and that's the reason it was canceled but that same rocket is now being used uh, on NASA's big rocket. And I'm, I'm a little worried about vibration. Yeah. And, and we should have known that that would happen. Oversight was just not what it should have been. Speaker Gingrich, give me your assessment of the ability of leaders to make a public statement of the kind John Kennedy did. Is it that if somebody made that kind of a claim, I mean, you, you talked about it with the reaction to your remarks on the Space Coast. Um, I mean, who is in charge of setting the American people to do big things again? Well, I think, I think presidents have extraordinary roles in defining for an entire nation of 315 million people um, journeys worth going on. And I think that um, if you go back to Kennedy, uh, and we were recently, Chris and I were up at the Kennedy Library recently, and it's very impressive. And they have the original speech in, in, in which he calls for getting to the moon. Remember, he and Buzz, of course, lived this, so, so I apologize for saying it as a historian. But, <laughs> but he's proposing in 1961 that we will be on the moon, and we get there in eight years, at a time when we didn't have the equipment, we didn't have the organization, we didn't, there were so many things we had to build, but he had two advantages. He was creating a new bureaucracy, not trying to remanage an old one. And they put a lot of money in. You go back and look at the share of the gross economy that went into NASA 
to get to the moon. If we did that, if we put that same amount of money in today and built a brand new mission to Mars bureaucracy aimed only on that assignment, um, you'd get there very fast. What about... Bud? You could do it with half that percentage. That's 2% yeah. instead of 4% to get to the moon. We're at a half a percent, and people are trying to do things with a half a percent. Far more difficult, far more meaningful. Mm -hmm. What about a private? Is there any way, in your, <coughs> in your book, you, you talk about a collaboration with other countries. That's mm -hmm. one part. What yes. about a private effort uh, involved in getting to Mars? Uh, more and more, uh, what we do as the government uses the private mm. sector. We uh, go out for bid. We put requirements out. Uh, not sure I want to get into that. <laughs> but uh, commercial crew and cargo is much cheaper than the government spacecraft. Yeah. Though, uh, by not managing things quite right, we are financing the Russian space program now to get to our $100 billion space station. Yeah. Yeah, let me give you one example. If we had taken the $9 billion, which we did spend on Constellation mm -hmm. to, go to get to Mars, and then canceled, if we had posted that as a prize, yeah. the number of players who would have come into the game, I mean, you do live on a, on a planet now where there are genuine billionaires who, if they get excited, they can either own a football team or get to Mars. Or run for president. Or run for president. <laughs> so you have, have all of these options. And I just, we, we've got to somehow re-inject dreaming and we've got to re-inject uh, the adventure of real risk-taking uh, back into the system, I think. Okay. I agree. I really agree. Excellent. We'll end on a moment of agreement, Buzz Aldrin. Thank you so much. <laughs> Speaker Gingrich, thank Great. you so Thanks, much. John.